Over the past few months, a surprising debate has been gaining real momentum. Should Canada choose the American F-35 or the Swedish-built Gripen E? If you've watched this channel before, you already know, I'm a big Gripen fan. For years, I've called it one of the best value-for-money fighters on the market. It's built for countries that rely on rough runways, dispersed ops, and small maintenance crews. And the Gripen E? It's even better. Smart avionics, strong sensor fusion, and it can launch from almost any long highway strip in the middle of nowhere. And yes, it's cheaper. A Gripen E costs around $85 million, while a fully equipped F-35A sits closer to $100 million. But here's the catch. That extra $15 million buys an entirely different level of capability. Because no matter how solid the Gripen E is, it's still a highly upgraded fourth-generation jet, built by a single nation with a limited defense budget. The F-35? It's on another planet. It's one of the most advanced tactical aircraft ever made. Backed by 20 nations, over 1 million flight hours, and more than 1,250 jets already delivered. Meanwhile, fewer than a dozen Gripen E's exist today. And yes, I can already hear the internet. F-35 is too expensive, too unreliable, too many crashes, American kill switch. So before the myths drown out the facts, let's break this down properly. Gripen versus F-35, what's real, what's misinformation, and why the F-35 might not just be the better choice for Canada, it might be the only viable one. In 2017, Canada finally launched the Future Fighter Capability Project, a program designed to replace its aging CAF-18 Hornets, jets so old that even the U.S. Navy retired them. Canada needed a modern fighter, not just an upgrade. By 2021, two major competitors, the Eurofighter Typhoon and the Dassault Rafale, walked out, arguing that Canada's requirements were written in a way that favored American jets. Then things got even more interesting. Canada quietly removed Boeing's F-A-18 Super Hornet with almost no explanation. That left just two finalists, the 5th generation F-35A, the 4.5 generation Gripen E. And that's when the real comparison began. F-35 versus Gripen E. Quick tale of the tape. F-35A. Single F-135 engine. 43,000 pounds thrust. Speed Mach 1.6. Internal weapons, 4, soon 6. Stealth RCS, 0.005 meter square. Golf ball size. Elite radar, full 360 degree infrared vision. Top tier electronic warfare. Gripen E, single GE F414 engine. 22,000 pounds thrust. Speed, Mach 2. 10 external hardpoints. Advanced Radar plus IRST. Strong EW Suite. No stealth features at all. The Gripen E is fast, flexible, and efficient, but the F-35 operates in a completely different technological class. The 2021 Canadian evaluation leaked later. Canada tested both jets across five weighted categories. Mission performance. Upgradeability. Sustainment, technical criteria, capability delivery. And when the scores were eventually revealed, the results shocked almost everyone. Mission performance, F-35, 97%. Gripen E, 22%. Upgradeability, F-35, 100%. Gripen E, 28%. This wasn't a narrow win. It was a clean sweep. The F-35 outperformed the Gripen E in every single category, often by massive margins. You'd think that if the Gripen E had any clear advantage, it would be in sustainment, the long-term cost and maintenance side of things.
But even there, the results didn't swing in Saab's favor. Sustainment. F35, 85%. Grip and E, 81%. Close, but still another F35 win. Next came technical criteria, the raw engineering and capability fundamentals. F35, 86%. Grip and E, 55%. And finally, capability delivery, how reliably each jet could be fielded long-term. F-35, 67%. Grip and E, 54%. Even the F-35's lowest score was still comfortably ahead of the Gripen. Final verdict, complete dominance. When the weighted scores were added up, Canada graded each fighter out of 60 points. F-35A, 57.113 around 95%, nearly perfect. Grip and E, 19.762, about 33%, a failing grade. In simple terms, one jet was valedictorian, the other didn't even pass the course. And this wasn't the only country to reach this conclusion. Finland's HX competition, same outcome. Finland ran a massive, detailed fighter evaluation before choosing the F-35. Even when aircraft were allowed to operate in mixed teams and use AWACS support, the F-35 won or tied for first place in every category. The Super Hornet plus Growler combo took second. The Gripen E plus two Global Eye AWACS took third. Even with extra help, the Gripen still couldn't beat the F-35. Operating cost myth, the reality. Saab often claims the Gripen E costs $8,000 to $10,000 per flight hour, compared to the F-35's $30,000. But that low number comes from a 2012 Saab-funded study that only counted fuel, consumables, no maintenance, no manpower, no real operational costs. When independent analysts recalculated, real grip and E operating cost circa $22,175 per hour, 9,975 operations, 12,200 maintenance, which Saab originally left out. Meanwhile, the F-35's 30,000 figure includes almost everything, even the electric bill. So the Gripen is three times cheaper claim? More marketing than reality. The Arctic argument? Also weak. Saab also promotes the idea that the Grip and E is better for Arctic missions. But testing data doesn't back that up. The F-35 has undergone extensive cold weather evaluations across multiple countries, while there's no solid evidence showing the Grip and outperforming it in those conditions. Norway's F-35A experience operating since 2015, performs well in Arctic conditions. Norway added drag chutes for icy short runways. The U.S. has also flown F-35s from Alaska since 2020. Fourth-gen versus fifth-gen reality. Gripen is highly capable, but fifth-gen jets like the F-35 are on another level. This is why experts viewed the competition as largely symbolic. The F-35 is objectively superior and dominates global fighter sales. Canada's initial F-35 decision. 2022, Canada selects F-35. 2023, deal signed for the first aircraft. Long-term plan for 88 jets. Political shift and reassessment. 2025, PM Mark Carney reopens the decision due to strained U.S.-Canada relations. Canada committed to first 16 jets, but reviewing the next 72. This rekindles the Gripen versus F-35 debate. The F-35 kill switch myth. No evidence, no credible source, no technical basis. Confirmed false by people at Lockheed Martin, USAF, and U.S. Navy. A remote kill switch would be a major security risk. The U.S. doesn't need one. Logistics already act as the real physical control. The kill switch myth. Oh, fighters, including the F-35, rely on external logistics, 
Without support, any jet becomes unusable within days. The kill switch idea comes from exaggerated beliefs about U.S. military omnipotence. Example, in 2023, an F-35B flew for 11 minutes after pilot ejection and remained missing for 27 hours, proof the U.S. can't simply track or disable jets at will. U.S.-Canada defense reality Despite political tensions, military cooperation is deep and long-standing. NORAD is a joint command, not a U.S.-only structure. F-35 sensors and long-range detection would strengthen security over Canada's vast northern regions, aligning with NORAD's radar upgrades. Why the debate continues. Canadian concerns focus more on politics and industrial benefits than the aircraft itself. Business columnist David Olive highlights worries about U.S. rhetoric and the appeal of building Gripen locally. Mixed Fleet Challenges Canada already committed to 16 F-35s. Military leadership does not want a mixed fleet. Two logistics chains, two training pipelines, two maintenance systems equals higher long-term costs. Saab's Gripen offer Promises include a Canadian Gripen manufacturing plant, potential global AWACS production, roughly 13,000 Canadian jobs, intellectual property transfer enabling Canada to co-own and export the aircraft. However, most promises remain uncertain, and Sweden lacks capacity to meet all orders without Canadian-built production. F-35 industrial benefits already flowing. The F-35 program has already awarded 3.3 billion plus in contracts to over 30 Canadian companies for components and development. Unlike the Gripen proposal, these benefits are real, ongoing, and guaranteed. Economic Benefits and Supply Assurance Lockheed Martin and Pratt and & Whitney signed economic benefits arrangements with Canada, ensures ongoing contracts and workflow to Canadian firms. Gripen's reliance on U.S. components, powered by GE F414 engine, subject to U.S. export controls. One-third of Gripen parts, including life support systems, come from American suppliers, Honeywell, Swapping engines, e.g. to Rolls-Royce, would be expensive, time-consuming, and delay deliveries. Even Gripen is not independent of U.S. support, potentially more reliant than Eurofighter Typhoon or Rafale. Rising costs and media perception. Original F-35 plan, 88 jets for 19B CAD, now 27.7B CAD. Cost includes jets, infrastructure, training, sustainment, services, and equipment. Auditor General increases due to inflation, exchange rates, and global munitions demand, not solely aircraft prices. Gripen costs rise over time too. Brazil's deliveries delayed by eight years, costs up 13%. Availability and mission-capable rates. F-35 availability often criticized, but context matters. In 2024, U.S. F-35As had higher availability than F-15E, F-16, F-22, and F-15CD. Lead Air Force in flying hours per aircraft. Operating costs, F-35A, comparable to F-15E Strike Eagles, debunking too expensive myth. Future Potential F-35 program offers continuous upgrades, cutting-edge tech, and multinational funding. Gripen may edge out the F-35 in some areas today, but long-term capability and potential heavily favor the F-35. F-35 Radar and Future Upgrades the F-35's AN-APG-81 ACER radar is already considered the best in the world. A next-gen upgrade, AN-APG-85, is in development and expected to be even more powerful.
F-35 can carry future upgrades because of its massive thrust and internal payload capacity. Engine and Payload Comparison Gripen E single F414 engine, 22,000 pound thrust afterburner, max payload some 15,900 pounds. F35 single F135 engine, 28,000 pound thrust dry, 43,000 pounds with afterburner, payload 15,000 pounds external plus 5,700 pound internal. F-35 can handle larger upgrades, Gripen is limited by its smaller engine. Speed and Combat Radius Gripen E Mach 2 Combat Radius some 930 miles F-35 Mach 1.6 Combat Radius some 770 miles Gripen's light weight gives speed and range advantage, but F-35's versatility and stealth outweigh it. Limitations and future tech. F-35's engines are reaching cooling limits. Upgrades like directed energy weapons require engine improvements, already in progress. Every fighter is a compromise, but the F-35 offers far more capability, adaptability, and future potential. Politics versus capability. Grip and push seems driven more by politics than real battlefield performance. Whether political factors can overcome the F-35's advantage remains to be seen. Closing Call to Action And with that, another edition of Air Power ends. Visit our channel Skyjet Wings for latest updates, merch, and more. Like, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell to stay updated.